So in a recent all hands meeting at Tesla, Elon shared some interesting insights for the future mainly on Tesla, but he also said some extremely interesting stuff about the future on Mars, namely that he himself wants to go to Mars in about 10 years. Is such a thing even possible? Well, let's ponder some timelines. And then I'd also like to talk about these annoying articles popping up about China's supposed plans to build a one kilometer long spaceship. I mean, how realistic is such a notion even? Well, let's try to find out. So in a recent Tesla all hands meeting, Elon shared some quite interesting details about Cybertruck, that it will start production in late 2022, about Gigafactories, a Tesla Robovan and that their smallest car won't be called Model 2. But regarding space, there was an interesting line where Elon said that he wants to go to Mars in about 10 years. Now, we are not sure if he actually means that he himself will go to Mars in 10 years or if SpaceX will send humans to Mars in 10 years. But the latter sounds far too conservative for Elon. We know that Elon wants to send the first cargo ships there already in three years in 2024. The next opportunity will arise to send starships to Mars because Earth and Mars align every 26 months. Then ships or probes can be sent there on a home and transfer trajectory, which is how stuff is actually being transported between Earth and Mars. It is a highly elongated orbit as you can see. Anyway, so it would be weird now if SpaceX would send cargo to Mars in 2024 and then humans would follow only 7 years later. Extremely untypically conservative timeline for Elon we dare say. What we think he meant is that he really was talking about himself. But how realistic is it that this will already happen in 10 years? Well, you know the famous Elon time. A factor of two difference can easily happen and we think that these 10 years should be taken as on the order of 10 years. So this could also easily be 20 years. But that doesn't change the fact that Elon still plans to at some point fly to Mars himself and help in the building of the colony. Of course he first will want to finish up all his projects here on Earth and there is still an insane amount of stuff to do. He still has so many projects going on that need his supervision. From Neuralink to the Tesla bot to the boring company to full self-driving. A lot of things require his attention, but it's clear that at some point these things will have been accomplished and Elon will feel that he can achieve more on Mars. Especially because on Mars, Jeff Hu won't be able to file 10 lawsuits per day against what he's doing on the Mars colony. In general, a very strong motivation on why Elon wants to go to Mars, apart from the excitement of actually walking on another world is that there aren't any fixed or rigid human structures yet there. Humanity can really start fresh on Mars and build a society that isn't held back by bureaucracy, corruption, lobbying or politics. A new society can be built by humanity's brightest as the people who will go there certainly will not come from this half of the IQ spectrum. Also, there will be a lot of high level engineering work required on Mars and as we know, Elon just wants to do engineering, it's what he loves the most. And on Mars, there will be many challenges to overcome in order to make the colony self-sustaining. First of all, the colony must generate power on its own, make fuel on its own, generate water and oxygen on its own. And then when all these things are achieved and humans can safely live on Mars without any risk anymore, other engineering challenges will arise. How can they live safely long term? So for example, will low gravity effects play a role? Will this have a strong impact on human physiology that needs to be overcome in some form? Or what effects will radiation play? And how can radiation impact be reduced to really zero without the need to move underground? Because, you know, underground without sunlight, that also might not be so good for the psyche long term. Then when these problems are solved, it's of course time to build a Mars industry. Metal ores must be mined and factories built. And if Elon learned something here on Earth, then how to build factories. 
Ideally, these factories could start producing lots of different products, from habitat modules to rovers to infrastructure such as hyperloops and of course at some point starships. It will be a lot easier to launch starships from Mars than from Earth because of the lower gravity well and they can be a lot bigger accordingly. Starships with twice the diameter could be built that can then make the transfer between Earth and Mars a lot more comfortable and which can also be used to explore the outer solar system. Mars will be an ideal base for venturing deeper into the outer solar system. So there will be a lot to do on Mars without any lobbyists or lawyers or politicians trying to hinder him as is the case here on Earth because the government form on Mars will be most likely a direct democracy. Every person will be able to vote on the big decisions, not some elected idiots. <laughs> As for the timeline, well, 10 years is maybe not realistic. We personally think more like 20. In three years, the first cargo ships will be sent to Mars and then depending on how safe Starship will be and how fast it can show that it can reliably fly humans to space without any incidents, humans could already be sent to Mars in 2026, so they would arrive in 2027, or the next window in 2029. As this will be extremely early days, it's more likely that Elon will wait until a somewhat basic Mars base will already exist and this might take a few years, so I really can't see Elon going to Mars before, say, 2035. But it's still exciting to even talk about such possibilities. However, of course, this will all strongly depend on what advancements can be achieved with Starship in the next years. But as things are progressing now at Boca Chica, we are really optimistic for the first humans on Mars by the end of the decade and Elon in say 15 to 20 years. Oh, and I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel here as this would tremendously help us to continue making such videos, so thanks a lot in advance. Now from Mars to China. We've been reading this headline here for over a week now and you know we wanted to ignore it because as you can guess it's kind of ridiculous but as now even the normally quite reputable space.com started writing the exact same headline, we wanted to find out the truth. So is China really planning to build a giant spaceship or is this a classic case of sensationalist clickbait headline? Well, what is more likely? That China now suddenly found a way to bring gigantic amounts of material to space super cheaply? Did they somehow already build a fleet of thousand reusable heavy lift rockets? Last we heard there was only one company working on such an idea and it's called SpaceX and uh, as far as we know it's not a Chinese company. Starship will actually bring down the cost for one kilogram of payload to low earth orbit from currently around $2700 per kilogram for the Falcon 9 to a staggering $13. Yes, 13, you heard that correctly. A Starship will be able to launch 150 metric tons to orbit for $2 million, as estimated by Elon Musk. So a 2 million divided by 150,000 and you get the crazy low number of $13.3 per kilogram, which is a relaxed 200 times lower than the current record holder Falcon 9. And how do the prices look for Chinese rockets? Well, it doesn't look good as China doesn't even have a reusable orbital rocket yet, let alone a reusable heavy lift rocket. The best they currently have is the Long March 5, a rocket that can launch 25 metric tons to orbit and which is non-reusable. We don't know the exact price for this rocket, but since it's non-reusable and it's completely thrown away after every launch, it's likely to be at least 100 million dollars, like absolute minimum. So best case, we're looking at a price tag of 4000 dollars per kilogram, like super duper best case. Now let's say they want to build a kilometer long spaceship. The ISS is currently the largest structure that humanity ever built in space and it has about 420 metric tons of mass, while being around 110 meters long. 
So China would need 10 times the length of the ISS at least and then it would be a really weird looking and really thin spaceship but let's be generous and leave out these structural considerations. Then China would need to send at least 4200 metric tons to orbit. That is only 168 Long March 5 launches. Hey, no problem. This rocket has flown 7 times in total since 2016. So at this rate, the kilometer sized spaceship could already be finished in 2141 if China started work today. Hey wait, isn't that around the time when the first enterprise will be built? Wow, everything is aligning perfectly yet again. Except for the small detail that the Chinese ship will be a weirdly long and thin ISS chain and not a cool warp capable vessel. So you see that of course, I mean how else could it be, this is another classic case of BS sensationalist clickbait headlines. In reality what actually happened is that this story is based on a proposal that was submitted by the National Natural Science Foundation of China at a meeting in Beijing a few weeks ago. The project has been awarded 2.3 million dollars equivalent of funding for further research and development. Yes, you've heard that right. All that happened is that some people in Beijing got really low funding of only 2.3 million dollars worth and they are now sitting somewhere in an office or basement and pondering about the far future possibility of building large scale spaceships. 2.3 million dollars is not even enough to build one single rocket. Yes, not even one single rocket, let alone a giant spaceship of such epic proportions. So yes, scientific journalism, friends, is also subject to lots of sensationalist clickbait BS. If you see a headline that is too insane to be true, then it always really is too insane to be true. After all, the main goal of these science portals is also to earn money. And where do you think people will click more likely on? On a headline that says, China has a few scientists sitting in a basement thinking about far future technology? Or China is 100% certainly building a 500 km large Death Star next week, confirmed! So yeah, friends, even scientific journalism is prone to clickbait sensationalism. That's the sad reality of our times. Anyways, that's all we got for today. We hope you enjoyed this episode and Jishuan and me wish you as always all the best. Have a nice day and then I would say on to the future.